Throughout the history of Magic the Gathering, there has always been one man who could make any deck more powerful no matter what. Who is he? How does he do it? Let's talk about it. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, and welcome to my video on the most powerful man in magic. Who is it? How does he do it? I bet you're wondering. Well, you're going to find out right now. The answer is Richard Garfield, the creator of Magic the Gathering. For those of you who don't know, especially way back in the day in the early 90s, there has always been this unspoken rule in Magic that if you can get Richard Garfield to alter a Magic card and sign it, it becomes usable in that fashion. You use it as it has been changed by the creator of Magic. Now, there are a number of cards that have been changed. There are things like the Chaos Orb, where he's changed it so that you have to throw it from further above the board than normal, but at the same time, whatever it lands on, it gets ripped up. It destroys all the cards that it lands on, and the Chaos Orb is ripped up as well. It's amazing. So, we have crazy things like that, and then we have simpler concepts like you have your fear of life where he's changed the concept behind the card. So fear normally makes it so that the creatures can't be blocked by any creatures except black and artifact creatures. And so you can see here that he's made changes like green creatures so that it more effectively encapsulates the idea behind it. So it's, it's pretty neat, the changes that he's made. Some of them are just fun little cosmetic changes like that. Some of them are straight up insane power boosts. Like this Mishra's Workshop, the most powerful Mishra's Workshop in the entire universe. Because it taps for three colors that can be used for any purpose. It, he basically, he removed the stipulation that it has to be used to cast artifacts. Which makes this absolutely busted. And on another bonus note, it's actually signed by the artist as well, Kajafoglio, which is really neat. So back in the day, if you guys don't know this, we all used to get really excited about the prospect of meeting Richard Garfield, getting him to alter a card. The biggest, most famous one that everyone talked about was the Black Lotus Cubed, and that was a Black Lotus that produced three mana cubed, which means you'd actually end up with 27 mana of one color. So obviously just with that in a fireball, you could kill someone instantly. Now I wasn't able to track an image of that one down, unfortunately. I don't know why, because I feel like I've seen it before, but it feels like with a lot of this old magic history, some of it seems to be disappearing off of the internet, so it's harder to find. I'm trying to find it all in the catalog. I'm doing the best I can. I found a bunch of interesting things, though I did. I found the Ornithopter Lord. Now this is a an ornithopter that gives all ornithopters in play plus one plus one. It costs one mana instead of zero. So it's funky. Obviously that's not a huge power scope, but who cares? How many of these cards, uh, like how many of the cards even exist? And for every weak one, you find a ridiculously powerful one. Like the time walk, where if your opponent talks without rhyming, you get the time walk back from your graveyard. So basically, you play this time walk, and if at any point during the match your opponent doesn't talk in rhymes, you can do a gotcha moment like you would with uncards and return the time walk to your end. How stupid is that? Alright, I got two more for you guys. The first here is the most busted Sarah Angel. It costs three mana to put out, and it's 7-7. Seven, seven. And <laughs> Alright then, that's pretty insane. Unless it's 100 mana, which I don't think it is. I think that's 3 mana. And then we have what might be my favorite, just because I love Rabid Wombat. This card was really hard to find back in the Legends day, and I really like the fact that it's been altered to be differently powerful. This one feels like just it could be an alternate version of Rabid Wombat instead of just automatically more powerful. Instead of the Wombat getting plus 2, plus 2 for every aura attached to it, he gets plus 1, plus 1 for every enchantment in play. So that makes it a lot more fun for a big enchantment based deck. But those are the cards that I have located that are Garfield Alters. They're officially known as Garfalters. Not really, I just made that up. I just, I just shrinked it down into that. Anyways, never mind. Disregard that part. The rest is true though. These cards were all signed by Richard Garfield and altered. And if you ever see somebody playing with them, you have to abide by those rules. So if you want to have the most powerful cards in Magic, all you got to do is track down Richard Garfield, 
and convince him to alter a card. Now that might be pretty difficult because now it seems like most of the alters that he does tend to just be, I'm gonna write your name in the art somewhere, do something fun. He doesn't tend to do functionality changes anymore, but it's still a possibility. So you might be able to boost up your deck by running into Richard Garfield. So if you found it interesting, hit like. I like talking about magic history. We'll see you next time, guys. Well, now that now that they've left, I, I want to have a talk with you. I'm not, I'm not happy with what you did to poor Jeff. There, you got the hate mob going after him, and now, oh, you you know what's happened. But I do, I do have to admit, Sprinkles, that I do kind of, I do want to kind of tongue your sprinkle hole. Wait, is this still recording? Fuck. Together, Together we, are we are the, the sixth, sixth color, color of magic. magic.